أنت الحبيب المصطفى أنت الأمين يا خير خلق الله خير المرسلين إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد We want to make this video as a نصيحة as an advice for the brothers and sisters out there regarding the issue of قبض or وضع اليدين or إرسال was called سدل as well What does that mean قبض or وضع meaning to fold or to grasp the hands in صلاة and sadal or irsal meaning to leave them dangling or hanging to the sides during the salah. We saw some videos from some of the du'at nowadays about this issue, but they didn't really get into depth about it. And then we see this uh, video from Hamza Yusuf or Hamza Hansen, whatever he's going by nowadays. Uh, and if he's watching, this is a nasiha, this is an advice for you. And we read the article by Suhaib Webb or Imam Will nowadays. Uh, also regarding this issue. And inshallah, it's an advice for you as well. And I tried to contact both of you through emails uh, and I didn't get anything back. So this is why we're making the video as a nasiha. And if you have the time, inshallah, we'd love to sit with you face to face. If you want to fly to San Diego, I'll pay for your ticket. If not, let me know when and where and I'll fly out myself to sit with you face to face. Uh, and so, hey, I don't really care how, care how tall you are or what kind of shoes you have on. Uh, I'll still discuss it with you anytime you like, inshallah ta'ala. Tayyib, um, and I know you're busy. Uh, I know, so have you got your hip-hop concerts and stuff that you're, mashallah, busy with, and Hamza, you're getting invited to the White House and stuff, and synagogues and all that, but if you can make time, uh, I'd love to sit with you because I think there's some critical errors you've made in your talks or your research about this issue. Uh, I'll start with Hamza, uh, Yusuf, or Hansen. Um, you have an audio, which is a video also on YouTube about this, and I watched it, and uh, one thing you said is... None of the Imams, and this is something they never tell you, not one of the four Imams considers Qabal to be a Sunnah. None of them. Shafi'i doesn't, Ahmed ibn Hanbal doesn't, Abu Hanifa doesn't, and Imam Malik doesn't. They all consider it, they call it Minhayat as salah Seriously? None of the four Imma? Thought it to be sunnah to fold the hands in salah. Uh, you know, before making such a statement, you could have looked up the books or spoke to some ulama of the other madahib to confirm. Because if we fact check this issue, you're wrong. Uh, the reality is that all four of the imma have narrations about it being sunnah. There is khilaf of rawayat on Imam Malik, and we'll discuss that insha'Allah. But if you look at the first of the madahib, the madah of Abu Hanifa, the standard book to know the opinions of the Hanafi Madhab is Al-Hidayah. Al-Hidayah, the well-known book of Hanafi Fiqh, that uh, is the standard, if you look at Nasib al-Raya of Zaylai or Fatha al-Qadir al hammam all of those are shuroob of Al-Hidayah. Uh, so when we look at what is actually written in Al-Hidayah about the opinion of Abu Hanifa alayhi, on this issue, you will find here uh, in Al-Hidayah, ثم الاعتماد سنة القيام عند أبي حنيفة وأبي يوسف حتى لا يرسل في حالة الثناء والأصل أن كل القيام فيه ذكر مسنون يعتمد فيه. What does it mean اعتماد? What does اعتماد mean in reality in the شرح the great scholar علامة العيني who also has a famous شرح في البخاري he wrote البناية which is a شرح في الهداية he writes about what is meant by اعتماد is اعتماد يده اليمنى على اليسرى اعتماد here meaning to support the, the hands together, to fold them together Abu Hanifa's opinion is it is sunnah you can look at the word here so for you to say that none of the four imma considered it sunnah it is, it is factually incorrect if you fact check this, this is wrong and inshallah this is a mistake from you and not something you did on purpose we, we have good uh, about you so you can, inshallah, see these quotes and make tawbah and repent for what you said. So here you see, according to Abu Hanifa and Abu Yusuf, in any qiyam in salah, where there is adhkar, there are masnoon, or there is Qur'an, you fold the hands. Now Imam Muhammad al-Shaybani has a view that only reciting Qur'an, you fold the hands, 
during Thana or, or in the Qawama you lead them down and this is the Khilaf but in either way it is Sunnah according to the consensus of the Hanafi ulama and the Asas of the Madhab to fold the hands during Salah, during the Qiyam in Salah and this is what we find in their books across the board you can look at Al-Quduri and others as well now let's go to the issue of Imam Malik uh, and you are uh, Malikis I believe so you should have known that one of the first places you can look to know what Imam Malik held, what view he held, is to go to the Muatta of Imam Malik himself. So when we look at the Muatta of Imam Malik, and this is one of the beautiful early books of Hadith that Imam Malik put together, may Allah reward him immensely, he actually put together many of the Ahadith and Abbaab for understanding his Fiqh as well. So if we look at the Bab he has, in the Muatta Imam Malik, he has Bab Wad'i al this is an entire chapter about folding the hands one upon the other in the Salah. He has an entire chapter on this issue. I want to challenge you and ask you to look through the book and come back and let us know where is the hadith or the chapter for Sadr Fis Salah in the Muatta Imam Malik. Did he have a hadith or a chapter about dangling the hands? Because he has an entire chapter dedicated to folding the hands in Salah, but I don't see a single hadith in the Muatta Imam Malik or a chapter or a heading showing that you should dangle the hands. So Imam Malik, in this chapter, he has the hadith by Mukhariq al-Basri who says about Wad al -Yadain. What did he say about Wad al -Yadain? That this is the way of the Anbiya. That this is one of the things from the Karam al nabuwa Al-Wad al -Yadain, ahaduhuma ala al ukhra fi salah That not just our Prophet وسلم, but this is the way of the Anbiya before him. And then you find the hadith that you quoted as well, uh, the hadith where Imam Malik, he quotes from Abu Hazim, an Abi Hazim bin Dinar, from an Sahal bin Sa'ad radiyallahu anhu, from the great Sahabi Sahal bin Sa'ad radiyallahu anhu, he says, كان الناس يؤمرون أن يدع الرجل يدع اليمنع على الدراع يسرى في الصلاة. This is the hadith. Now, let me bring it to the English writing for the people who don't understand Arabic to be able to benefit from. So the chapter, the placing of the right hand on the left hand during the prayer or on praying, and then you see the hadith that this is the way of the Anbiya. Then we look at this hadith where Sa'ad bin Sa'ad said the people were ordered that a man should place his right hand on his left arm in the prayer. You said something interesting in your video about this being from the Amawiyah and stuff, and we'll discuss this later. But if you look at the Mu'atta, Abu Hazim, the one who narrates from Sahal bin Sa'ad radiyallahu He is the one that Imam Malik narrates from. So he is the first one to hear from the Sahabi himself. He particularly points out that I knew that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is the one that ordered that. So who was the one ordering? It was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abu Hazim, who is the one in the Salah, the one reporting from Sahal bin Sa'ad radiyallahu anhu, clarified this issue. So, this is something that we find from the Muatta Imam Malik. But if we go towards Maliki Fiqh, we do realize there are two opinions within the Maliki Madhab. One is to make Irsa or Sadr, and one is to make Qabr or Wada. And they're both there, we don't doubt this. But your statement to say that none of the four A'imma thought it to be Sunnah to fold the hands, this is something flat out incorrect. Um, let's look at the Ikhtirat of Ibn Abdul Bar, the famous Maliki scholar, He's called the Bukhari of the West, the great Muhaddith. He had many shuru of Muatta, including a Tamheed and Sithkar and others. So let's see what he says about this issue. When we look at his writings, you will find the first thing is, he writes, إِنَّ الْوَدْعَ الْيَدَيْنِ الْيُمْنَعَ عَلَى الشِّمَالِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ سُنَّةٌ What is ikhtiyar of Ibn Abdul Bar? That to fold the hands, the right upon the left in Salah is Sunnah. And then he says about this, that this is the call of the Jamhur. This is the opinion of the majority of the Ahlul Ilm, including from the Sahaba, Abu Huraira radiyallahu and Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu, and Aisha radiyallahu anha, radiyallahu anhu ajma'in, may Allah be pleased with all of them. And this is the call of Sa'id bin uh, Jubair, and al Nakhai and Abu Mijlid, and al Thawri and Ishaq, and uh, Abu Dawood, and, and others. And he quotes something very beautiful to see here. He says that in a tamheed, that ijma' min al-sahaba, there is ijma' of the sahaba 
ala anna dhalika sunnatun. That this folding of the hands is sunnah. This is in a tamheed, you can go look it up for yourself. And then he mentioned that it has not been reported ahad minhum that any one of the sahaba that did khilaf what came from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He is showing here that no sahabi, none of them made sadal in salah. This is the opinion of Ibn Abdul Bar in a tamheed. And then he continues to show that this is also the opinion of Abu Hanifa, that it is sunnah to fold the hands. Ibn Abdul Bar is saying that Abu Hanifa holds this opinion. And it is Malik, Imam Malik's opinion, except Ghair, Rawaya Ghair Ibn Qasim. Except for Ibn Qasim, one of the students of Imam Malik, the other riwayat from Imam Malik are that it is sunnah to fold the hands in salah. And the, the saying that it is sunnah to fold the hands in salah is the call of Shafi'i. It is the opinion of Imam Shafi'i and Ahmad bin Hanbal. And this is the ikhtiar of Ibn Abdul Bar himself. SubhanAllah. You told us that it is not from any of the uh, Imma al-Arba'a. And Ibn Abdul Bar, the great Maliki scholar, is telling us that all of the Imma al-Arba'a and other than them, and all of the Sahaba by ijma', by consensus, hold that is sunnah to fold the hands in Salah. Now, let's move on. If we look at Al-Awsat, Ibn Mundir, the great scholar, he's from the second, end of the second hundred Hijri, he died in 317 Hijri, a very classic scholar, Ibn Mundir, Al-Hafid Ibn Mundir, he has Al-Awsat, an amazing book where he collects the opinions of ulama and their aqwal. What does he say about this issue? If we look at what the, he talks about, the Salah and what the Al-Yadain, and then he says, from those who hold this to be Sunnah, who are they? Malik Ibn Anas. Imam Malik, he holds that yamna ala yusra fi salah. one of the ulama that holds this opinion is Malik bin Anas. Ibn Mundar reports it from Malik bin Anas. And then he says Ahmad bin Hanbal and Ishaq. And this has been reported from a Shafi'i and Ashab al Rai. Who are Ashab al Rai? They are Abu Hanifa and his Ashab. So we see Ibn Mundar also reports this from all four of the Imma al Arba'a that it is Sunnah to fold the hands in salah. Now I know there is khilaf of rawayat from Imam Malik, as I said earlier, Ibn al-Qasim reported something different. But this issue is really about your statement. To say that none of the four Imams held this view, this is factually incorrect. And we have a good expectation that this was a mistake, and after watching this video and reading these books, you're going to make Tawbah, inshaAllah ta'ala. If we look at the Shafi'i mother, we've already seen that Imam Shafi'i is also of that view. And if you look in al um and other places, if you look at the entire quotes from Shafi'i, you will find it. But if you want to know the standard of the madhab, we can look at the book Minhaj al-Talabin of Imam al nawawi Minhaj al-Talabin of Imam al nawawi the famous book, the Mu'tamid in the Shafi'i madhab. As we know, many times if you want to know what the opinion of the Shafi'i madhab is, you look at the books of al nawawi We find, he says, Yasunnu. Yasunnu, yani it is from the Sunnah. These things are from the Sunnah in the Salah, and one of them he said, جَعَلُوا يَدْهِ تَحْتَ صَدْرِهِ آخَذًا بِيَمِينِهِ يَسَارِ Subhanallah. What does he say? He says, the Sunnah in the Salah to hold the hands, to bring the hands together, holding them under the chest. He even mentions which place to hold it. Holding the left one with his right. Holding his left hand with, the, with his right under the chest, this is the sunnah according to the Mu'tamid of the Shafi'i Madhab. Now, if we keep going to the Hanbali Madhab now, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, if we look at one of the earlier mutun, in fact, it's the first mutan in the Hanbali Madhab, it is the Mukhtasir of Al Khiraqi. And one of the early Shuruh Al Wadih, the Sharh Mukhtasir Al Khiraqi of Nuruddin Abu Talib. Very early, beautiful sharh, classic scholar. What does he say? In this sharh, he says, وَأَنْ أَحْمَدْ يعني It is reported from Imam Ahmad. أَنَّ السُنَّةِ What is the sunnah? وَدَعْهُمَا To fold them. فَوْقَ سُرِّهِ يعني Above his navel. You said they didn't, none of the four a'imma considered it sunnah. We're showing you that in fact, all four of them have been reported to call it sunnah. The word sunnah is here for folding the hands above the navel, يعني, towards the chest, الشافعي, and this is also the call of Imam al-Shafi'i, as it has been clearly pointed out here. Tayyib, when we talk about the Hanbali Madhab, there is no discussion that can be complete without going back to al-Mughni. 
Muwafiquddin ibn Qadama, the great scholar, uh, he wrote Al-Mughni, and this is a standard. I will show to you from Al-Mughni and also Sharh Al-Kabir of Shamsuddin Al-Maqdasi, his nephew, about this issue. What does Al-Mughni say about this? He says, Amma wad al yad al yumna al al yusra fi salah fa min sunnatuha. Yani it is from its sunan. It's those things that are sunnah in salah is to hold the right hand on the left in salah. And this is the same thing we find in Sharh al Kabir that this is masnoon, that it is from the sunnah of salah to fold the hands. And this is the mu'tamid opinion of the Hanabila. So now, when we look at these aqwal, and we look at these quotes from the books themselves. I'm not just giving out references from my own self. I'm showing you the actual proofs. I hope that after seeing these, you will take back what you said and the factually incorrect statement that you made that none of the four a'imma considered it sunnah to fold the hands. And then you went on to say something else. Now for something that would seem to be such an important sunnah that everybody says the other way is a bid'ah, if you ask anybody where did the Prophet ﷺ put his hands, nobody can tell you. Except for the Hanafis have a weak hadith that says he put them under his belly button. And that's why the Hanafis pray with it under. But nobody can tell you where he put his hands. That's the only hadith which is, you know, it's a weak hadith. So it's funny that nobody knows where the hands were. Seriously? Nobody knows where the hands go. Nobody can tell you. Uh, you couldn't have asked somebody. You couldn't have looked up a book before making such a statement. We already showed you and Nawawi and others uh, and Nuruddin uh, al-Talib. Uh, they all mentioned where the hands go and the line for it. But I I'll show you one more, inshallah. And this should be very clear. This is the Sunan of Ibn Majah with the Sharh of the very early and respectable scholar it is Abu al-Hasan al-Hanafi al-Sindi, the great scholar of Islam and is famous in right upon Sharh of Ibn Majah. I wish you had looked it up for making this statement. But inshallah, it's still time to make tawbah. He mentions the ahadith about folding the hands. But then this is what I want to bring your attention to. In his hashiya or his sharh, he says, قَدْ جَاء فِي صَحِيْءِ ibn خُزَيْمَةِ and وَعِلْ بِنْ حُجَرْ قال صليت مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فوضع يده اليمنى على يده اليسرى على صدره. and then he continues here. what does he say? he says صح أن الوضع هو سنة دون الإرسال ثبت أن المحله المحله الصدر لا غير. what does he say? he says that it has been reported in the Sahih of Ibn Khuzaima on the authority of Wild bin Hujr. That he says, I prayed with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he folded his hand, the right hand, upon the left hand on his chest. So when you say that nobody can tell you, it's funny because this is telling you right here from the hadith. And I wonder why you didn't mention this hadith. Instead, you went to the da'if hadith of filling them below the navel. But you know there is a sahih hadith here. And what does he mention here? Uh, the famous Abu Hassan, a Sindhi al Hanafi. He says, what is authentic is to fold the hands. This is sunnah. He uses the word sunnah again, which you seem to think is not used here. He says, do not irsal. Irsal or sadal is not from the sunnah. And then he says, this has been reported and the place is the chest, not other than the chest. This is the opinion that is clearly reported with a clear dalil. Whether you agree with this opinion or not, folding on the chest or above the navel or below, for you to say that nobody can tell you where to fold, or for you to totally skip the authentic hadith and try to bring only the weak hadith in front of people, there's only one hadith. This is academically dubious and factually incorrect. May Allah make it that you make tawbah and turn back from this. Then you said, The Shia all do sadal. Their imam was Ali. It's not something that they just made up. Do you know? Ja'far al-Sadiq did sadal. Subhanallah. This is something amazing, that now uh, a teacher, an ustad, supposedly a scholar of Islam, is going to bring Shia, Rafidi Rawayat, in contradiction to the Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah's books of Hadith to take fiqh from. You seem to be obsessed with the Shia and the Khawarij to use them as Dalail. 
But why don't you look in the books of the Hadith Sunnah to see what Ali Radiyan really did? And I'm going to challenge you here, inshallah, from any of the books of Hadith, can you bring me a rawaya that shows that Ali bin Abi Talib Radiyan, who he made sudden? Can you? Don't bring me books of the Rafida or the Khawarij or, or, or something like this, but from the books of the Ahl Sunnah. Inshallah, I'm going to show you from the books of Hadith of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah a Hassan reliable narration that shows that Ali Radiyanhu folded his hands above his table. This is the book Sunan Abi Dawud. I'm sure you're aware of it. I wish you had looked into it before saying anything about Ali Radiyan, but since you have it, I'm sure. If not, I can let you borrow mine. Please open it up and take a look at it. If we look at the Sunan of Abi Dawud, we find this narration. And this is a Hassan narration, which reports, he says, رَأَيْتُ عَلِيًا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ يَمْسِكُ شِمَالُهُ بِيَمِينِهِ عَلَى رُسْخْ فَوْقَ سُرَّتِ يعني, He was holding his left hand on top of his, uh, his right hand on top of his left hand on his wrist above his navel. This is the way of Ali Radiyan. This is a Hassan Rawaya. You can see it's reliable. Not just that, Abu Dawud also has from Ibn Mas'ud radiyanu and Ibn Mas'udin radiyallahu anhu annahu kana yusalli fa wada'a yadahu al-yusra ala al-yumna fa ra'ahu al-nabi alayhi salatu salam fa wada'a yadahu al-yumna ala al-yusra and this is again a Hassan, a reliable narration. So what we find in Sunan Abi Dawud from Ali ibn Abi Talib and Ibn Mas'ud and other narrations is to fold the hands. Now you have made a statement that Ali Radiyanu used to make Sadr. Can we see some proof for this from the books of Hadith? I have shown you this Hadith, and I've shown you the Takhrij, that's a reliable Hadith, that Ali Radiyan used to fold his hands above his navel. Can you show me now your narration, or are we gonna rely upon the Rafida and the Khawarij to get our fiqh? You said something else that's very interesting. The people were told to put their hands. Kanan nas yu'marun. Now, when you ever you have a, uh, a passive form in hadith, mabni lil majhul, it indicates uh, tamrib. You know, there's like a weakness. It doesn't have the strength of an active form, like the, the Prophet told us to do this. If it has a passive form, then you wonder why, why they put it in that. Mullah Ali al Qari says, it could have been the Prophet, it could have been the Khulafa, or it could have been the rulers that were telling people to do that. So even the Hanafi, one of the great Hanafi scholars of Hadith says, it's not clear who was telling who to do what. But I tend to, my personal, and this is my conclusion in here, I actually think it's a political thing, because the two people that were leaving their hands at their sides were the people that were most resistant to the Umayyad rule. And that was the Khawarij and the, and the Shia. So it's very interesting that the thing that immediately distinguishes your political allegiance <laughs> is in the prayer. So for people to leave their hands at their sides when everybody's Umayyad. MashaAllah. So you seem to be going back to trying to follow the Khawarij and the Shia. But if you weren't sure about the hadith, before you went to Mullah Liqari or anything, you could have just gone to the Muatta Imam Malik. Uh, Muatta Imam Malik, hopefully you have this book. Inshallah, as you're a follower of Imam Malik, uh, supposedly, you could have gone to it and you would have seen very clearly, as I pointed out before, Abu Hazim is the one who reports the hadith from Sahal bin Sa'ad radiyan. Sahal bin Sa'ad radiyan was a Sahabi. And when the Sahabi says that we were ordered for something, who do they mean? They mean Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if you weren't clear of this, the one who reports it from Abu Hazim, he says, "I knew that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the one that ordered it." You could have looked at this. You didn't have to guess, as you don't know who it was. Maybe it was Amawiyah. Maybe it was this. Maybe it was that. The Rawi in the Hadith explained it himself. And if you didn't understand this issue from here, you could have picked up Al Bukhari, Sahih Al Bukhari, and you could have got Fath Al Bari, the one of Ibn Rajab or the one of Ibn Hajar Asqalani, they both explain this issue. This is Fath al-Bari of Ibn Hajar Asqalani, the standard book to use to understand Sahih al-Bukhari. If you had opened it and looked in it, you would have found that under this hadith, what does Ibn Hajar Asqalani say about this hadith? That who is the one that reported this? 
he says, والحكم المرفوع يعني it has the حكم of being from رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن قول الصحابي when a sahabi says كنا نؤمر that we were ordered بكذا with this or that يسرف it is taken towards بالظاهري in its apparent meaning إلى من له الأمر وهو النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام that who is the one that ordered it رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and he gives the دليل the hadith of عائشة رضي عنها when she says we were ordered to make up the fast and, and not to make up the salah when they were they were there at Hayd. So when Aisha didn't say who was the one that ordered, does that mean it was the Amuya or the Abasiya? No, we know that this is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we find that many uh, ulema, like he mentions here from Al-Bayhaqi, he said, Annahu la khilaf fi dhalika bayna ahlul naql, that there is no khilaf between the people of Naqad, the people of Hadith that have reported on this issue. That according to all of those ulema of Hadith that recorded this Hadith without khilaf, without disagreement, that this was something that was ordered by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then you see here a beneficial quote from Ibn Hajar al-Qalali. He says, وَمِنْ إِسْتَلَحْ أَهْلُ الْحَدِيثِ إِذَا قَالَ الرَّابِ يُمْنِهِ what does he say? That when, according to the istalah, the technical terminology of the people of Hadith, when the Rabi says that we were ordered by this, then it is raised to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is from the science of Hadith, and you know that. So I wonder why you kept this from the people in your talk. Maybe you forgot. Maybe you made a mistake. So inshallah, you will correct yourself on this. Understand something. When the Rawi in the Hadith explains something himself, and the ulama of the Hadith that recorded that Hadith explained that thing themselves, including Imam Malik in his Mu'atta, there is no room for you to start guessing at, maybe this person said it, maybe that person said it. It's been clarified already. And when you don't mention who gives an Amr, it doesn't mean there is weakness. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Kutiba alaykum as-siyam, or Kutiba alaykum al-qital. He doesn't say, Kataba Allahu, because it's understood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the fa'il that has been made hadf of here because you know that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has the right to ordain upon us fasting and things. And in that manner, if a sahabi like Aisha radiyana or Sahal bin Sa'ad says we were ordered, it's because we know that who ordered the sahaba, it was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam as the ulama like Ibn Hajar and Ibn Rajab and others in their shuroob of al-Bukhari. And as Bayhaqi says, without khilaf, those of Ahlul Naqad, yani those who recorded the hadith without disagreement agreed that Sahal bin Sa'ad al meant Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered him here. Then you mentioned something else very interesting, which is to say that this is the only authentic hadith on this issue. But if we go to Sahih Muslim, the book of Imam Muslim, the other strong or, or authentic book of hadith after Al-Bukhari, we find hadith in here as well from Sahih Muslim. What do we find? First off, we find an entire chapter. Bab wad'i al-yadihi al-yumna ala al-yusra ba'd al-takbirat al-ahram tahta sadrihi fuq al-surratihi So what does he say? This is a chapter. Look at the name of the chapter. It is a chapter for folding or holding the hands, the, the right on top of the left after takbirat al-ahram, after you make takbirat al-ahram. And he even says tahta sadrihi, he even gives a location under the chest. And this is what he's saying, on top of the navel. So between the chest and the navel, to fold the hands there. Amazingly, you said that nobody can tell you where. If you had just read the title of Imam Muslim here, you would have seen this hadith. And then he gives the hadith of Wild bin Hujr that we've mentioned earlier, Anna that he saw an Nabi alayhi salatu salam. And then he discusses the salah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then what does he say? That he saw him doing what? Folding the hands. He saw him ثُمَّ وَدَعْ يَدَهُ الْيُمْنَ عَلَى الْيُسْرَى He saw him folding his right hand on top of his left. And this is from Sahih Muslim. So to claim that this is the only Sahih Hadith, the one from Al-Bukhari, is again incorrect. And Wa'il bin Hajar radiyallahu has been reported this Hadith from, not only from his son, but from his mawla, from his freed slave and others. So this is an authentic Hadith. What does Imam Muslim say in the explanation of this Hadith, in his Sharh? Imam al nawawi in his Sharh of Sahih Muslim, what does he say? Wastihbab, yani we see that it is mustahab, it is sunnah. Wad'a al-yumna ala al-yusra, 
then to fold the hands, the right and the left, بعد تكبيرة الأحرام after performing تكبيرة الأحرام ويجعل لهما and to put put them place them تحت صدره فوق صورته under his chest above his navel وهذا مذهبنا that is the مذهب of إمام الشافعي المشهور وبه قال الجمهور and he says this is the مذهب إمام الشافعي to fold the hands above the navel under the chest after تكبيرة الأحرام this is the famous and well-known madhab of Shafi'i, and this is the call, this is the saying of the majority of the ulama. In fact, we could go through a lot of books of hadith, but I'm just going to end this here, inshallah, with something very important. We see the hashia of Rawat al Marbi'ah, and this is the sharh of Zad al Mustaqni. Zad al Mustaqni by al Hajjawi, and the sharh by al Huti, and then the hashia by al Qasim. And this is one of the standard books uh, used by the Hanabal and others as to benefit from. Inshallah, we'll look at what does Ibn Qasim quote here. He talks about the ahadith of wada' al-yadain. Quoting from Ibn Abdul Bar, he says, well, wada' al-yadain, yani wada' al-yad, ala al-yad, to fold the hand over the hand, min as-sunnah, it is from the sunnah. Well, wada' al-yadain, and to fold the hands, ahaduhuma, one, ala al-ukhra, on the other, mutawatir, it is reported mutawatir forms on al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not only is this reported in Sahih Ahadith, but it has been reported in Mutawatir, I mean from so many chains, that this is Ilm al yaqini there is no doubt in it. You said there is only one. Look at Ibn Qasim's quote, it is Mutawatir, there is no doubt. And I've shown you the book. And when we look at this issue, we've shown you so many clear Ahadith about folding the hand, the place, and everything. Now I challenge you, bring me one Sarih clear, Sahih, authentic hadith that states that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed with his hands down with sadr or irsal in a salah. One hadith. One hadith. And I will give you $10,000 as a prize, inshallah. This is a statement on YouTube. One hadith. But don't tell me a hadith that Rasulullah made takbir and all his limbs were in their place because the place for the limbs in salah is to fold the hands. That hadith has nothing to do with sadr or wada. It doesn't say that Rasulullah put his hands down. You are making up a meaning that when he says Rasulullah had a'tidal, when he was calm in salah, this means the hands were down. This is your guesswork. But I showed you clear hadith from so many books of hadith, mutawatir and sahih hadith, that clearly mentions the right hand on the left and the place. And I'm asking you to bring me only one hadith that shows that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it says that he did sadr in salah or irsal in salah, his hands were down. That clearly mentions that. Okay? Because when I looked, I couldn't find it. In fact, the only thing I found was again in Sunan Abi Dawud. In the Sunan of Abi Dawud, I did find a chapter for sadr for salah. For sadr in salah, as you mentioned. But what did I find? I found in here. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نهى أن الصدر في الصلاة. What does he say? He says that رسول الله أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه says that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he forbid صدر في الصلاة. To make صدر in صلاة was something that was forbidden. So this is something confusing to me that the only hadith we find for صدر is showing that it's forbidden. And I realize many of the علماء they took by the word sadr to mean hanging a cloth with two loose ends or to make isbal. But also many ulama like Al-Munawi in Fayd al-Qadir, he says Al-Murad bi sadr al-yad hu al-irsal. Yani what is meant by sadr here is to dangle the hands in salah. This is something forbidden by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, explanation of this hadith of Usiha I'm not really getting into. What I'm just saying is the only thing I found for sadr in the wordings of hadith is a forbidden safi. So can you find this a hadith that says that Rasulullah sallallahu did sadal or irsal al yadain in his salah for the complete salah. Not when he's going for ruku or something, but during qiyam, standing, he prayed with his hands down. If you can find it, inshallah, I will give you $10,000 as a gift, as a prize from me. I want to end by saying, for my brothers and sisters in Islam, we can't be tricked or fooled by statements. We have to look at the proof, the dalil. And what we find is many ahadith for praying with their hands above the navel, below the chest, or on the chest. Any of these positions are acceptable because there are clear ahadith for it. And if we 
followed these ahadith, were following the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu he says that inna ma'ashar al-anbiya, verily the anbiya humirna, yani they were ordered, and he talks about making the iftar, the, the futur early, and making the suhoor late, and then he says wa nada'a, to fall iman, uh, imanana, yani our right hands ala shimalana, upon the left for salah. And this is a Sahih Hadith from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. So not just our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but all of the Anbiya. This was their way to fold their hands in Salah. It is proven from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is proven from the Sahaba. It is proven from all four of the Imma al arbaa Even if there is Khilaf from Malik, from one of his students, about resting in Salah, but that is an issue of resting, and we can get into that later. But to say that there is only one Hadith on this issue. It's factually incorrect. To say that none of the Aymal Arba'at are to be Sunnah, this is factually incorrect. To say that nobody can tell you where to fold the hands, this is factually incorrect. To say that Ali Radiyan made Sadr in Salah, this is factually incorrect. We're not taking our fiqh from the Rafida of the Khawarij and them. So we are taking our fiqh from what we find clear from the books of Hadith and from what is authentically reported from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum wa akhir al-dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen